All right, guys, down in the workshop again today, and uh, I've got another tip for you here on how to make yourself a bit of an anvil if you've got difficulty trying to reach uh, into areas inside a bag or something like that. Um, so these are my little riveted handbags that I make. They're really easy, um, but they're really cute, and uh, chicks dig them, so that's nice. Anyway, what I've got is um, my template cut out, and I've already gone ahead and put in the, the bottom two here just to show you this example. Um, but I was having to play around, and for a little while I was trying to figure out the best way to get in and access the side of this bag, and you know, both to put a hole punch through it, and then also to uh, go ahead and put my rivets in. So if you took these little two-part rivets, um, how do you go ahead and reach down into that area? And for a little while I was playing around with, you know, well you put your bag up on its side like this and then you get your, your mallet or your hammer in and you sort of tap it flat. And that's, you know, not great. Um, and then if you're trying to use a, a doming tool or a setting tool or something like that, then also not great because there's not a lot of space inside that bag to, to reach before you start hitting the top. Um, which made it very difficult. And I thought, man, what I really need is like an anvil. Like, you know, those old school style ones that uh, Wiley e. Coyote's always dropping on the Roadrunner uh, with the big end that sort of hangs over that I could slot that over and then, you know, have something strong to hammer into. And then I started thinking, well, but those things are really bloody expensive, and you know me, I'm pretty tight. So um, what have I got around my workshop that I could use for the same principle? And I thought, well, really, it's just a cantilever, isn't it? So here's what I came up with. So if I take this clamp off my arbor press, I can just tie that down real quickly. Like that. And all I have here is a piece of, it's about 40 millimeter um, square bar, about uh, one and a half to two millimeters thick steel. Uh, you could use a solid piece if you wanted to, but this seems to be working for what I'm using it for. And it's literally just cantilevered over the end of the bench top. So all you need is a bench top and somewhere that you can run it over. Obviously, this wouldn't work if I tried to run it this way because there's nothing to tie it into but I can run it over the end of the bench top and tie it down here and using the pressure of the clamps it provides a cantilever that makes that really strong so I'm moving the table and not actually the the steel then I've got just a piece of scrap that I put over the top of the metal and we can go to town and uh, try using it so let's give that a go and I'll show you how it works Okay guys, so the first part of our test here, I'm going to demonstrate a punching test. So I've got a hole punch. Uh, this is one of the variable hole punches. And then I've got a piece of 5mm scrap leather and 5mm uh, latigo. And we'll assume that this is what we're testing to punch. I'm going to do this right down towards the end so you can see how much uh, flex or bend there is in there as well. And if you wanted to uh, protect your tools a bit better, I'm going to just wing this, but um, you could use a cut off a bit of one of these poly cutting boards, uh, and that'll just stop you from rounding over your tools if you hit through the scrap and go into the steel. But, um, you know, I'm a pro, so don't have to worry about that. So let's see how well this works. Right there, we've punched through, no problem, and uh, not sure if you saw any flex in that at all, but that gives you a good indication of how much force you can apply at the end of that cantilever. Okay, for round two, we're going to have a look at the reach test. Now, what I have here is my little handbag, uh, and this one is seven and a half inches from the base to the top at the mouth. So we'll slot that over and see how it looks. And I'll do this where the flap is at the back. You can just see I fold back the flap and then fit it over. And right there, you can see that I've made this approximately seven and a half inches or longer. So this will move right up to the end. I can feel the end right there. 
and I can apply all the pressure I need to hole punch and to rivet on that end. So you say, all right, Scotty, that's fine for little rapid rivets, but uh, what if I'm a real leather worker and I use copper rivet and bars? Like these ones. Okay, well, um, I've moved it over to a sturdier bench top. It still moves a little bit, so if you've got a heavier workbench, then you'd probably be better off than, than me here. But um, here's another piece of latigo. Let's slot my rivet in. I'll put the burr on. Okay. Now we've got here our setter and mallet. Let's start this off. Okay, we get a good amount of force down on that. We want to trim that burr off. Just about two millimeters. Yeah, that's pretty good. Give it a little doming to start. Good. Now let's whack it with a hammer. I reckon if you were in a bind, that would get you out of trouble. So there we have it guys. This should cost you like nothing if you've got a piece of steel around and a couple of clamps uh, or a couple of bucks at worst if you've got to go down to the hardware store. And uh, I reckon that'll do the trick.